All right, well, this is Jenny, Jennifer Hawkins, and uh, she's actually going to, she is the... <laughs> All right, get uh, out of here. Hold on. Is that the appropriate drop of the mic? Uh, yes. We're, we're, we're not sure if that was the right timing for the drop, the mic drop. But. Oh, it's not. Okay. Move back down. She just okay, loves taking that? pictures. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you'll see Gabriel a lot, my son. So yes, Jennifer Hawkins is also our curator this year for Wild is Landscape. It, um, it says it is. There yes. you go. Okay, right in the mic. There you go. Thanks. Okay, Jennifer is a local artist and arts educator who grew up here, working on a farm ranch in the northern part of Wallowa County. Uh, nature's always played a large part in her life, and she's earned multiple degrees in arts education from the University of Oregon. And fine arts. <laughs> she enjoys teaching, especially the next generation. Yes. Uh, help me welcome Jennifer Hawkins. And welcome. I included, oops, got to remember to use this. I uh, included this slide. It's from one of our previous wilderness um, exhibitions out on the Zoom wall. And so I wanted to include a welcome one. And you'll see this young gentleman a bit throughout these because he is my son and he often accompanies me on trips and so forth. If you want, I can full screen that for you. Can you? Yes. Okay. Can I do it? Yes, you can. Press that. It's also my technical advisor. No, no, no. You do it. Okay, right. so this was taken a few years back on the wilderness um, out on the Zoom Walt on our our ex yeah, exhibition. So Gabriel and I both have our canvases set up. It's early morning. So we, I absolutely love going out into the woods, into the mountains, into the canyons. Um, and I will show you a little bit. This is a painting I did that's partway down the Redmond grade between Flora and Troy. It also is, I was standing on part of what was our homestead, our property on the way down, which ran a long ways down along the road that goes down there. How many people have driven that road between Flora and Troy? Oh good, so a lot of people are fairly familiar with that. Okay, so I work in a number of medias, and this one was oil, and I love going up in the mountains too. So I want to show you first off a little bit of the artwork that I do, another oil painting, done up in High Meadow, looking at Eagle Cap. Little Lost Lake. How many people have gone hiking up into the Willowis? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is the crowd. So a little bit more of the, of the paintings that I've done. I've done more painting in the last 10 years than some of the other artwork that I've done, just because it's a little more accessible. And I love being back here. This is, I also do sculpture. I've trained in many different things. And I love doing animals, so landscapes, animals, and fibers. I got my MFA from the University of Oregon in fibers. I was told when I went back to grad school that I had to choose one area. And I'm like, what? I want to do painting, I want to do sculpture, I want to do fibers. And they said, no, you got to choose one area, just one. <clears throat> so I figured out a way to do pretty much all of those, love of color, and sculpture, large figures, and um, how to get the fibers worked in there. So these are large felted capes over life-size or larger than life-size armatures. <clears throat> Pardon me, my voice is still a little rough. I was sick this past week. And so I'm just clearing out from that. Isn't one of those mine that's nice in shadow? No, it's not no. yours. This one, you can see. Say, no, Take a look you, at me. Because we're <laughs> also at yeah. the University of Oregon. Yes, they can't tell because the shadows. Yeah, this was this was taken a few years back. A few years, and few decades. I, yeah, shush. <laughs> there you are. He's modeling another one. We took a tab a photograph taken of it. Oh, wow. So you can see that's where it, this one was larger than life. <clears throat> that felt it also? Yes, yeah. yeah. And this work I need a large studio for, and yeah. I don't really have access to that. Um, 
some more felted work. I love nature. I love abstracting, <clears throat> as well as doing more realistic work. And this is another felted piece using other media in with it. Looking at stream beds, I love the way the water flows around the rocks, the distortions of the rocks, the different textures and colors. What's the tooth from the things? The oh, those are little shells. There we go back. Yeah, these are little shells. I'm not sure what they're called. Are they dentilium? Yes, they are. Thank you. And then little beads and other things used in there so with the filter you pieces. Get them to see it? They're, hollow. they're hollow, and I sew them on. They're tiny. It's old world funny right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can see two threads yeah. holding that one on. Yeah, I was going to say some of them I had to do little crosses. Other through. ones I could go through the center. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Several of these she made, she um, pressed me into service, literally, because it requires pressing and a lot of um, yeah. physical manual Especially labor to get to felt. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> okay, I have spent most of my life teaching. So I am an art educator, and um, <clears throat> I currently teach up at Joseph, and I also teach down at Troy every other week. Oh. So I get to drive out here every other week and see how the seasons are changing. Yeah. Visit the four kids who are now attending Troy School. And it's just a wonderful trip to go back through the ranch. We no longer own, our family no longer owns that ranch. It's long been out of our hands. But it is really enjoyable to see the property as we go down through it. These are my students on a field trip. I love getting the kids out into nature whenever possible, which means early in the fall and late in the spring, because we usually cover with snow otherwise. So this is taking them up into the mountains to do a little bit of sketching and watercolor painting. I also teach weaving and all kinds of things. I teach everybody from kindergarten through high school. So I'm going to click through a few of these. This What's your is favorite age to teach? Oh, I, I would have said when I started teaching high school. And, but now I, I like them all. There's a charming aspect to kindergartners. <laughs> they can't do a whole lot with their hands. It's pretty clumpy. You know, their motor skills are pretty underdeveloped. But their, their insight on the different things is just so much fun. Different perspectives. Sixth graders are a lot of fun because they have both skills and still have part of that younger mentality going on. Here's an image of a bunch of my sixth graders and trying to teach them some of the fundamentals of landscaping, how to um, lay out a picture, how to mix your colors, how to get the colors you intend to mix, and then talking about value and intensity, things like that. Um, we've also done a number of large projects, again, liking to get the kids outside. And this is one of my students who's gonna graduate this year and McKinsey and her painting. I also teach them how to stretch their own canvases. Okay. And we have a wood shop there, so we can stretch, we can cut our wood, put it together, fabricate it, stretch the canvases and so forth. So they go off to college knowing or into the world knowing how to do that rather than buying them. I teach the fundamentals, drawing skills and so forth, so. <clears throat> yeah. And also, at the Giuseppe Center right now, I'm going to give a plug for my students, the students, all the students of Willow County, and Giuseppe Center. Right now, a student show, if you haven't seen it, it's drop nice, by and take nice a look. There's a lot of wonderful stuff there from all over the county. I also occasionally teach down in the home. And these are the kiddos who are down in Troy right now. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, here is a map. So, um, wanted to show a few things. Here's Promise. Let's see, let's start out where we're at. We're right over here. So, this little chunk right there. And on down to Flora, on down through. I'm going to show some slides going down through here. I'll also show some from my childhood. And I grew up on a branch. Our house was right there. The house is still there. It looks different, but it's still there. And then our land kind of paralleled most of the road, all the way down to the river. 
And then this strip long river was part of our ranch too. It is now Game Commission or BLM. It's public land, it's wonderful. When my folks sold the ranch, there was multiple trades and the public wanted that. So someone ended up with it. So this whole stretch along here is public property. I think it's wonderful. <clears throat> now for Nikki, let's see, let's follow this. Where were you, Nikki? This is Promise, you are over here. Eden Ridge, right around in here. Yeah, right. Is that about right? I'm having a hard yes. time focusing my eyes. Yeah, I know I can't see over at Bradley Yeah. <laughs> We're getting older now. Yeah, we are. I, yeah. This road yes. will take you on over to Elgin or Tollgate. It's gorgeous, but probably yes. not this time of year. Probably yeah, snowy. Yes. This road, if you are super adventuresome, you can go all the way over to Dayton, but don't do it this time of year. That road even scares me, even though I grew up Take going up and down the track. Yeah. Take the saw with you. Yeah. <laughs> and only do it in yeah. like July, mm -hmm. August. Um, but it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful drive, a little scary. And then for those who are a little bit more faint of heart to go down into this area, take Route 3 going north down to Bogan's Oasis, and then drive on up to Troy. For those of you who are more adventuresome, you know, take the road down here between Flora and Troy in the Redmond Grade. It's beautiful, but you do down here right on the brakes. It does turn into a one lane loop road with pullouts. Just look ahead. Just look ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I drove all the way out here and around and back and through Promise just yesterday. And I can say all the roads are dry. There's no rough spots with lots of mud that you have to slurp through. It is kind of rough. It's dirt roads, but it's all pretty passable and easy to go in a, a regular car. You might have to go a little slow. <clears throat> I went about 30 miles an hour from Troy to back through Wallowa through Promise. So average about that. Is that how you usually go with um, no, because it takes longer. It's more dirt road. Oh. I go right out here, take the cutoff to Flora, and then right on down to Troy. I've done that all winter long. Sometimes it's a little hairy. You have to buck drifts around Flora and on down across the top until you drop down into the canyon. <clears throat> when I was a kid, there were a couple of years that we got snowed in, just really snowed in, five or six feet of snow. And um, those were always fun as a kid, you know, no school, yay, they can't, they have to pull out the big equipment to uh, knock down the drifts and get through. Yeah, this is growing up in, down here on the grade. So, yeah, I was a little kiddo at one point in time. We had one dairy cow, she produced a lot more milk than we could drink. But learned how to milk cows, how to collect the eggs. So I'm there with my bucket, and my friend always had a catalog. And lots of cats keep the rodents down. <laughs> and collecting eggs and enjoying it. The barn is no longer there, I wish it was. Okay, this is a very poor picture, but I wanted to include it. We grew up in a happy family. So this one, we were all laughing, including whoever had the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my requisite cat. We have our family dog. We had another one who was around there as a cow dog. So. He wasn't quite as gregarious. And this is the family. The house is still there, but it's been remodeled. We did a lot of work. We hayed, just like hayfers did. And so in the summertime, we were working most of the time the sun was up. We had 150 head of cattle, and we ran up on the National Forest, back towards Sled Springs. So I guess that's pretty common out here. And this is a few of them as we were moving them up the road. Branding, always an exciting time of the year. So those who had more muscles were the ones who usually wrestled the calves. And I was one who sat on the fence and kept records for filled syringes, things like that. And this is just about the time of year we'd be doing it. In August, early August, would be harvest time. So we ran cattle in the forest, and we had sheep, we ran down into the canyons, and then we farmed the bench lands and some of them were pretty steep. So this is harvest time, gives a little bit of an idea of what it looks like. We did have leveling combine. 
kids. <laughs> My dad tipped one up on the header one time, and it was in this field that was so steep. Yeah, pretty scary. I came down to give him lunch, and he was sitting under a tree in the shade, which was really odd for my father. And I said, what happened? And he started giggling. And I thought, oh, here comes a story. Whenever he has a high-pitched giggle, there's a real story. And he says, I just tipped the combine up on the header. I thought, which is the big reel across the front? So when turning a corner, you have to go down or up. So he's turning the corner, coming down, and tipped the whole machine up on the header. He says, I thought I was a goner. He would have been crushed by the machine. And he says, but it hesitated, it fell back down, I got out of it, and now I'm sitting under this tree. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay, sheep. Sheep were kind of my thing, too. I herded the sheep down into the canyons each morning, and there had to be a human with them because the coyotes would get them. So there always had to be someone around. We had our little paths and trails. We'd go down into the canyons and spend the day and bring them back or more likely following at night. Once they learned the routine for the area we were going, they pretty much went and they knew the routines. And so I'd bring them back in the late afternoons. <clears throat> Here's me and one of my sheep. I tamed a few of them down, but I learned after selling lambs at the 4-H yeah. fair oh. that you only tame, tame the ones you're gonna keep. Yep. Because it's just so hard to sell them mm -hmm. and know that they're gonna be butchered. Although I knew that all the weathers pretty much were going to be butchered anyway. But you know, the ones you really get attached to. So here's a little piece of artwork. I've inserted a little bit of artwork as I go along. Me and my sheep. Me and my horse. And it's gorgeous. This is up on, going down the grade, this is up on what's called Arco Flat. Nothing is flat. Mm -hmm. And looking down onto what's called Lido Flat. And so as a family, we did take time, time to time, to go for pleasure rides. Not all was work. I also love the mountains. This is a picture from back in high school. I was introduced to hiking by a uh, minister. We'd take a group every year for a week up into the mountains. And that started my love affair with the mountains. That's how I love to spend my summers, is hiking and creating artwork. And here's a little more recent photo, Gabriel and I. Um, hiking up near Glacier, Glacier Lake, and up over Fraser in the background. So this is one of the fun things about living here. I spent 35 years away from here teaching around the Pacific Northwest, and then I came back about 10 years ago. Now, a little bit later on, you'll find these up in the forest. Does anybody know what these are called? I looked them up and then I forgot. They're not the camas, they're something else. I think they're part of the Allen family. Okay, we don't have any botanists blue -eyed with grass. us. Huh? Blue-eyed grass? Huh? Blue-eyed blue grass. Blue blue grass, okay. That might be what it is. These will be blooming, should be blooming sometime soon, but we've had snow up here. In fact, the last time I came out to Troy two weeks ago, we were about two foot of snow up through the forest. So it's a little late melting off this year. Yes, over near Promise, um, yes. between Promise and, yeah, Wallowa. So, in about that time, when you start seeing those, you'll often find these. So, I just threw this picture in, too. There is, out through the forest, there's a lot of morels. Okay, around Flora. Now, this is not wild. This, there are a lot of homesteads out here. The property that we owned, I know there were at least seven different homesteads on that land. And, but many of them are reverting back. In fact, you can't even find where the homesteads were. If you find flowers like this, mm -hmm. you found a homestead. If you find Lombardi poplar, or if you find yellow roses, yeah, you probably found, or the remains of an old orchard, you probably found where an old homestead was. So this is up here at Flora, and we're gonna go on down the road. Okay, Flora Cemetery, which is kind of fun. I almost threw in a picture the, from actually just about a month ago where this was all covered with snow. Right up to the top of the fence. On down. <clears throat> in a little while, well, this was taken uh, probably a little later in the spring. Yeah, they got the round barn, which is wonderful. I call this the walking round barn because this is not its original location. Oh, its original location was over here. 
And so again, another wonderful thing, somebody bought it, whoever owns this property now, and they moved it. So I call that the walking around barn. I used to play in that barn when I was younger, me and my sister. We rented the property. Here it is on its original location. This house is yes. no longer there. This is my mother. And we used to go over and play in this because it was set up fantastic for feeding cattle. You could stand up here at the top of it and just take a couple of feet and throw hay down chutes that went in to stalls all the way around. Wow. So whoever designed it did a really excellent job. Okay, I looked for a picture of the farmhouse and couldn't find one from the road, but I did this painting many, many, many years ago. And so I threw this one in here. This is a view as we're going down the road of the ranch the way it was when I was a kid. And a little further on down, a little further into the spring, we get lots of the arrowroot balsam. And so again, this is just right alongside the road. And these are pictures I've taken usually driving down to Troy. And this is another one. This is about where that painting was, one of the first paintings I showed you as we're going on down the grade. And again, a little bit later here in the month, well, in the month of May, there's going to be wild plums blooming all over that lower ranch, in that lower bench, Lytle bench. On down the road, in a short distance after this point, it starts to get a little narrow. And you can see some of those plums blooming on down there. So, whoops. This is near where I painted the picture for this show, um, drop off. <coughs> so that's just standing on the road, taking a picture down over the edge. And then getting off there, you can see the road going on down for anybody who's not familiar with it. And the beautiful flowers, the flocks, there's such a variety of wildflowers out here um, on the breaks a little bit later in the spring. This is a picture I took two weeks ago, maybe a little bit more than that, so I'll give you an idea of the road. The road is in pretty darn good condition for a dirt road. There's not like big holes or big ruts or slimy or super steep or super uneven in any way. But it does drop right off to the river. Okay, down to along the river. So this is part of along that river that used to be our property, which is now public property. So between when you hit the river, you can either go across the new bridge or stay straight. And if you stay straight, that's a beautiful area to go and paint. And along there, it's on the south side, so the sun isn't in your eyes. And you can drive for two miles on up that area. And until you cross the next cattle guard, it's all public land. This is a painting I did last winter. I went down and taught. And I was teaching the kids painting, and I saw this view on my way home and thought, oh, I gotta paint that, I gotta paint that. And usually, I don't have the time to go back and do that, but when I got back to Enterprise, I found out school had been canceled, it was a slow oh. day. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I've got the afternoon. <laughs> I had the afternoon to go paint, and that's what I did. So this is up from the town of Troy. This is up the other way. This is to the north. This is going up towards Bartlett and Grouse Flats. And this is Troy down here. This is the Grand Ron. This is Lytle Flat, which I just brought you down in pictures. Right up there is Arco Flat. And then on up this way is the beautiful Wanaha River. It goes on up into the wilderness area. And this is hiking up about two and a half miles up a trail that goes right up to Wanaha. It's beautiful. If you haven't hiked up there, the trail is pretty, pretty decent. And it's definitely wildflower time down there on the river. So it will be looking something like this. And if you've got the time and the interest, I'd encourage you to go take a hike. This is looking the other direction. And you come around the brakes here, but again, the trail is in pretty good condition, and I'll bet the trail crew has already hit it this year. So yeah. I don't know for sure. Is anybody okay. here on the trail crew? I was there Thursday. Uh, the peak, the flower should peak this next Thursday. Okay. Um, the, there's arrowroot out, but if you can see the haze of yellow, but they're not in full bloom. They're not in full bloom yet. Yeah. And yes, they have worked on it. 
Okay. Yeah, this is the last spring going up that trail. And this one is contemporary. This was about two weeks ago, right down on the river. The plums are blooming. And whatever this is, is blooming. Okay, thank you. And shooting stars are blooming. And whatever these things are, are blooming. What? Water leaf. Water leaf, okay. Yes, I tried to look these up and couldn't figure it out. How to find it. Yes, and these are blooming all over. Also, keep your eyes out for wildlife. We have lots and lots of turkeys out here now. Now, slipping back into the past, when I was a kid, there were no turkeys. They had all been, I assume, shot out of this area. The elk were even reintroduced to Willowick County. There are so many things here. I don't remember seeing very many ducks or geese. There's a lot more elk. So a lot of things have changed. It's kind of the rewilding and so forth of the area. So yeah, turkeys, I, getting a picture of them is kind of tough without a tall photo. They're pretty wily. They're all over the place, but they're pretty wily. Elk, and I borrowed this picture from a friend, Darcy Calhoun, and um, this is up on the Grouse Flat, Bartlett Flat area. So there are a lot of elk out here. You just have to find them. And there are bighorn. The bighorn were being introduced back in here when I was in high school, later high school. So this is a painting I did of the bighorn out in this area. And these I took yesterday. Yes, between, if you take the road from Troy, go back through Promise and over to Wallawa, there are a couple of just beautiful, gentle, west sloping hills, absolutely covered. Yeah, they're stunning. So if you want to make that drive, there's beautiful, beautiful flowers out there right now at the peak. That may be about the last one. I thought I had another picture of the bighorn. Nope, I think that's about it. A couple of things. I have set around some rocks. And I just want to tell a story, another one. In cultivating the fields, the bench lands were always there. Whether they were covered with trees or whether they were open prairie, I'm not sure prior to settlement in this area. But I always wondered as a kid growing up, we had to pick anything this size and larger up out of those fields. And there are a lot of rocks in those fields. So we'd throw them into the bucket of a tractor, haul them over the edge, and dump them off the edge. Well, they didn't roll all the way down. They were just off the edge in the steeper areas. We couldn't farm. So we picked lots of rocks, anything from this size up to boulders. And as we're picking them up, I would find things like this. <laughs> What's the difference? This one's smooth. It's shaped. And I'd say to my dad, hey, look at this. This is really interesting. And he'd go, oh, it's a rock. Just throw it off the edge. And my mom would go, yeah, that is really interesting. So for years, we threw these off the edge. There's hundreds of them that we found. And then I went to college, and I took an anthropology, archaeology course. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I, you know, why didn't I realize what these were? So this area has been inhabited for thousands and thousands of years. And there are just literally hundreds of these that we have found. So I know that they found sandals over in Fort Rock in Western, well, Central Oregon, that were 14,000 years old. And I think I read something recently, 22, 23,000 years old habitation of the area. So if you want to take a look at these, there's different ones or some just for mashing. <coughs> what is that, Jenny? Huh? What is it? It is a grinder. So it is basalt rock, the same thing that most of this area is made out of, basalt that was laid down millions of years ago in layers, thin layers. I could give you a geology lesson. Um, but it has been smoothed off so it can be used for grinding and mashing. These are heavy. This one, with the shape it is, was probably used on a, on a stick for pounding. So it's got this perfect little shape here and around that you can attach. Yeah. <coughs> Where are the other ones? And then there are three other ones back there. This one is rounded, 
So it was mainly used probably with some other, some pestle mortar in around it to grind with like this. It fits the hand beautifully. Some of these have smoothed off sides. They've been used for grinding this way or this way. We would often find these around the damper spots. So these things are heavy. I would want to pack them. So they left them in place. And I would suppose, can't find them one year. Well, you haul another rock up from the river. You work on it and use it. So they just fit the hand beautifully. So there really was something different about those drops. <clears throat> okay. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, where was this one taken? This one was taken past Prom I drove the road, so I was going from Troy to Wallawa through Promise. And this is just past the Promise area, so somewhere in there between Promise and Wallawa. And it's, yeah, they're stunning. You can't miss them. They're on both sides of the road, mainly on the west side. But they're on both sides of the road. And what did you call the flower? What is this flower again? Is the blue-eyed grass? <clears throat> yeah, the blue-eyed grass. Yeah, I think it's blue-eyed grass. That's what was said. Grass. I don't know if that's right. I found. She's not sure. I found Douglas. What did you find? Uh, Douglas Ocinian. Oh, but it is blue-eyed grass. Oh, I think or or Nimbus. What's this thing? Nimbus stylus or. Uh, Leaf, leaf. So but it says Mexico or Central America. I think it is a blue-eyed grass. Sorry. Oh, yeah. It, it is the indicator for morel mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it, means, it means they're somewhere. The blue I didn't they take the time to look. Blooming, but I do. Somebody did teach me that. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because they usually occur about the same time the mushrooms so. do. Yeah. Jerry, uh, it, uh, it has to be Yes, yeah, yeah I've noticed they're, that. They're mushroom indicators. Yeah, up around the Malau Lake, yeah, I noticed yeah. that. Well, also. Up here would be a good place to it. Yeah. Okay, any, any other questions? I'm not sure where I'm to, maybe we should move me along. Okay, no, I guess right. I'm done. For sure, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.